Kill the tape here in this medium heavyweight fight. So we have Jonathan Gracie, 25 years old, 5'9", 191.6 pounds, and Sergio Rios, 34, 6 foot, 190.4, almost exactly the same, and we're ready to get started. Sergio Rios looking ready to be here, <laughs> fired up. Such a crafty competitor is Rios. A lot of unorthodox techniques in his arsenal. But it's Jontas Gracie with the guard pull. And I've heard from many people, in fact, that Jontas Gracie has the strongest grips in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> I've heard that too, actually. Seriously. <laughs> it's a well-known fact. Interesting to notice how Rios is keeping his weight so far back to avoid that deal heel of Jonathan Gracie, but regardless of that, Gracie almost effortlessly coming up on top to score those two points. And if you look at Gracie's face, it's so interesting. I feel like every time I see him fight, he always looks exactly the same. Totally calm, cool, stone collected, faced. stone face. He can be down, he can be up, he can be, you know, in the ninth minute of a match in a scramble. <laughs> and it always looks exactly the same. Yeah, Jontas, extremely uh, experienced competitor. Two time bronze medalist at the Worlds, at the black belt level, European champion. 2020, I believe. Of course, training in a room like Atos HQ means you're surrounded by the world's best every single day. Right. So there's a reason he's calm. He has belief in his technique. <laughs> For good yeah. reason. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting about Rios, if you're not super familiar with him as a competitor, he won the adult black belt Brazilian Nationals in 2010. 12 years ago, he was winning the adult black belt Brazilian Nationals. I mean, that's a long black belt career, and we see some of that experience showing through now as he returns the sweep and ends up on top of Gracie. Yeah, great, great timing there from Rios, right? Such a creative competitor. Almost using basically a wrestle up there. Yeah. You don't always see so much in the gi. I would actually say pretty similar to a lot of Otto's style. We always talk mm. about, you know, Kainan uses those kinds of sweep a lot of uh, sodas. A couple, so a couple of the other Otto's competitors that are more well known. They have the pant grip on the bottom of the pant, almost like a, like a four finger grip. And we see another return of a sweep there. A very crafty sweep from Jonatus, but this time looks keen to Trelly dropped the pressure a little a little faster, but not fast enough before Rios can start to return for a sweep of his own. Interested to see how this is reset because I'm not sure if the referee called stop before Gracie re pulled. So you have this restart here with Rios on bottom position, trailing by two. And we have quite a few points on the board here with only a little over two minutes into this match. Jumping Toriando style pass there from Gracie, but... <laughs> Rio's guard holds up to the pressure there. I love Gracie's insistence of the collar grip when he is passing. A lot of times you see him use that collar grip to place his opponent either on their side or their shoulders, and then the legs follow. And we're seeing a lot of battle of footwork here. We get like an inside position from one, and then it returns from the other, but now we see a single leg control to the back clinch for Jonathan Gracie. Threads the hook all the way across. Sometimes called the broomstick back take, right? He drags Rios down to the ground. I've heard so many names for the mm -hmm. back take. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different ones, but it is a very tricky position for the person on top because no matter where you step, you can be followed, right? Now, every instinct says this is a, a good position for Jontas Gracie, but Rios has such a crafty, weird game that he could somehow reverse this. Yeah. That's what he does best is get out of imminent danger and somehow change the, the outcome of the match. So I'm yeah. curious to see what he has in store here. I mean, Rios is well known for his flying attacks, right? I mean, that's literally the first thing that comes up in conversation when you bring him up in the jiu-jitsu community is his resourcefulness when it comes to throwing up a lightning-fast attack. So even though he's in a dangerous position, I mean, look at how he is 
kind of looking to not only pry that left leg off of Gracie, but then immediately start to, to have some re-attacks of his own. So a quick look at maybe like a Kimura style attack for there for a moment, but now back into keeping this nice strong base in this four points in hopes of not getting scored on. Jaunt is now looking to jump onto the back, reconsiders. Yeah, Jaunt is doing a great job being very patient here. Very calculated, meticulous game. He does not, I think he knows with an athlete like Rios, you can't risk any kind of space or mistakes in these because of the game that we're talking about, right? There's no room for error. Big roll through there for Gracie. I actually don't know which person initiated that, but now he has this double armpit control. There was a look at an illegal clip there for a moment, but this double armpit control can be used to flatten your partner onto the ground or, like in our South Desert, or move to the back, and he gets that first hook in. Not quite a solidified position, though, as Rios looks to turn and maybe try to go face-to-face, -face. but John just follows maybe for the mount and then now to the back. Well, great use uh, of just flowing through those transitions from Gracie there to end up on the back of Rios. Rios doing everything he can to escape, but Johns was all over him. Yeah, Johns is now with a very heavy lead. He's going to score four more points here for the back, giving him a 12 to 2 lead with four and a half minutes left and some acrobatics there from Rios to come back to a top position. And just like you said, Chase, you might be able to score, but is it how likely are you to hold him in one of those dominant positions? And it's clearly, that's a difficult task. It's tough. It's tough. But Rios definitely had a significant deficit here. 10 points to make back. That is going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible, with just four minutes left on the clock. So you know he's going to be chasing the sub. But he's locked down right now in the close guard of Jontas Gracie. So he's got to really get things moving here if he hopes to come out on top. And it's really interesting when we compare matches, we saw other matches with very dominant positions that maybe the person that did not have the dominant position ended up winning or there weren't many points on the board and things of that nature. Now, these positions that were dominant positions with mountain back, they happen very quickly, almost the same speed as the others, but now we see this huge point deficit. Interesting crafty guard work there from Gracie. So it just goes to show with somebody like at the level of Gracie, he's such a technician and so great at being a strategist when it comes to the rules and scoring. He wasn't in those positions for long, but he did what he had to do to make sure he was going to get his point. So a lot of times that's what it comes down to at the highest levels. Not just being more dominant, but being very strategic and making sure you put something on the board. Mm -hmm. And he certainly did with 12 <laughs> quite, total points. Quite a lot of points, that's right. And now we see Rios trying to make something happen here. Those grips of Gracie just almost insurmountable. Yeah, I mean, the last thing you want with, some, with the, the strongest grips in jiu-jitsu is someone playing lasso. <laughs> that is very, very difficult. Or this sit-up guard, right? I mean, this with someone with mad grips is so difficult because Gracie, he does such a good job of keeping those sleeve grips so that Rios really has a hard time maintaining his posture. And even when he does, like we're seeing here, he can't get any passing going. He doesn't have any use of his hands. And of course, as always, right as I say that, freeze his hands for the first time <laughs> in the match. <laughs> Looking to cut through his Rios. John says Gracie inverts for now. Now jumping on a sub attack, it looks like. I can't even really see what he was looking for, but drops back. Gracie ends up on top here. Two more points here for Gracie's lead, giving him a 12-point lead with two minutes to go. Beautiful footwork leading to a leg drag, but <laughs> pretty intense to see like a Turkish get-up style <laughs> escape from Rios, just pushing Gracie off as if it was nothing, right, from a tight leg drag to standing. Wow, almost a look at the mount there from Gracie. Yeah, Rio's not content to, to ride this out. He's still trying to find the way to victory here. But John says Gracie just has such technical prowess, right? He doesn't give anything away easily. He always manages to come up on top, score the points, do the right things. He's a very uh, concise competitor. He doesn't concise, make any mistakes. Yeah, concise is a great way to put it. Maybe precise. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> but there's a reason that he's constantly on the podium at the world's biggest tournaments. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said earlier, he's a European champion in 2020. Bronze medalist of the world this year. 
Minute 41 left here. And right into that sweep off the stand-up. Not wasting any time looking at another opportunity to score. Could see him pop up to his feet and try to crunch down the back of Rios and almost is able to do it. Yeah, well spotted, Kendall. <laughs> called that one in real time, but Rio's showing off the impressive timing of his own. Now we end up in a kind of awkward scrambling position here. Gracie looking to come up on top. That'll be two more points there. Quick look at what could have been the footlock attempt there from Gracie. But with 18 seconds to go and such a heavy lead, obviously there's no pressure on him to put anything else on the board. He will ride out this 10 this 10 seconds with a 14, sorry, 12 point lead here in his super fight. <laughs> Great show of sportsmanship out there. You can see both athletes had a pretty good time and that match played out, I think, about what most fans expected, right? A lot of strange looks from Sergio Rios and creative attacks, but Johnson's Gracie, very precise, very accurate with his attacks, and uh, ends up there with a, a dominant victory for the Atos competitor. And your winner of the Black Belt Medium Heavyweight Super Fight, Jonathan Gracie, representing Atos Jiu-Jitsu. There you have it. Jonathan Gracie is our winner in our second Super Fight of the night.